Hi there, my name is Sonia Boko. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And here I share with balloon artists tips, tricks and techniques on how to make amazing balloon art. For today's tutorial, I actually want to revisit an older design of mine and that is the beautiful fairy. My intention with today's tutorial, I have made a few videos in my time. Maybe, um, I think it's like 36 or something like that. And during that time, I often get the feedback I wish I could see what you were doing. Well, not often, more often than I'd like. Anyway, I made the decision to reshoot some of my older videos, but they're still going to be sticking around, and I'm going to link the original video up here. So feel free to check it out after this video if you want. And my intention is not to remake the same design exactly, because where's the fun in that? I am going to incorporate a few new techniques and tricks that has been built upon throughout my previous video tutorials. How fun is that? So these two lovely ladies are going to make a friend for them and let's find out just how it's done. Let's get to it. Your balloon list for these designs are the following. Have you got it? Excellent. You can just rewind back to this point and hit pause to find that list again if you need it. Let's get started. First of all, we are going to use the 6 inch quick link and I'm using it here in blush. I am using my essential balloon tool which is my Legenda and I would not... I suppose I would be where I am today with it so that's not what I want to express. I would highly recommend a Legenda if it is in your budget because they are amazing. I've inflated my 6 inch to approximately the size of my palm, if not just a little bit larger. I'm just going to let a little bit of air out and before tying it off I am going to go ahead to inflate the 260 which is going to be used for her dress. I'm inflating that balloon and leaving approximately 20 centimeters uninflated and instead of tying those balloons off individually, I'm just going to tie them together. We're going to do two pinch twists next and we're taking a one inch bubble, two and a half centimeters, and we're going to do a second. And that's just going to position on the top nicely like so. Next is going to be her body bubble. Here I'm going to do approximately a three finger bubble. I like to not make that too long, keeping the proportion nice and petite in length. By having a more petite middle section here, I think it helps to make the design cuter. And we are going to go ahead to go into a flower, and I'm going to do a five petal flower. If you're not familiar with flowers, you might want to check out this video here. <laughs> I'm going to do another four of these. And there's a couple of different ways that you might do your flower. But I am going to fold, squeeze, and twist. So at this stage I have four in place and most of that is just done by eyeballing it to get it as consistent as possible. But so that you know what kind of length we're dealing with, it's about a four finger bubble. And now, just with the remainder blue, we're not going to use all of it, but we are going to bring it back up to the same side as the bodice. Twist off a bubble, either the same size or slightly smaller is okay too, but we are going to twist it into the pinch twist here. Just rolling it through and around, and I'm going to remove that excess. tied it off. You can go ahead and trim it if you like, I'm just going to give it a pull and release. It's going to disappear somewhere into the design. So, so far, this is what we're looking at. 
and that back bubble is just slightly smaller but you know what that absolutely is of no consequence you do want it to not be pushing the design too far forward um, or back or anything like that but it's fulfilling its intended purpose which is awesome <laughs> Next I'm going to take the 160 in blush. I have inflated it with just about a centimetre there that's uninflated, half an inch-ish. <laughs> we are going to not use all of this balloon, so some of it's actually going to get removed at the end as well. But we are going to take that nozzle in. And we've attached the arm to the doll. I'm going to go ahead to twist the bubble that's slightly shorter in length than the bodice. And bring it down underneath our flower. Now I don't want the legs to be too long, so I'm going to pick a length. If I stick my thumb out to the side there, and I'm going to twist. Just a few twists there, but now we are going to fold the blush bloom black up on itself and we're going to give it a nice gentle twist around on the other leg. When you find the point that meets at this leg at the top, twist that bubble off and then bring it in. And I'm just wrapping the excess of that balloon around the leg and bringing it in between some flowers over by the other space where we're going to pop the other arm. And to finish, we are going to do a bubble that's similar in length to our original arm over here. Let's just make sure that this arm bubble balloon is sitting in the right spot. That is. Uh, where it's going to nestle in between the bodice balloons. Again, my bubble is just slightly smaller than the bodice. Let's bring it in and around. See, we used all that remaining air in the balloon. Easy. Go ahead to remove and tie off the excess. At this stage, this is what our fairy is looking like. We're going to go ahead now to add in her hair. For her hair, I'm going to go ahead to use a 260 in the rose colour. I am going to pinch off the point which is about 2 inches or 5 centimetres from the end of the balloon and I am going to inflate. Just letting a bit of air out and then tie that nozzle directly onto the quick mark. And we are going to start off with a pinch twisted bubble of one inch in length. Take your 260, take your 260 and start to bring it down the back of the quick link head. Finding the point which is about two thirds down, twisting off, we're going to add another one inch pinch twist. And then we're just going to determine the points where this balloon is going to reach into the neck bubble. Twisting off. We're going to introduce the two. Next, we are going to run the 260 bubble up into the pinch twist at the top of the head. Keep it nice and close to the first series of bubbles that we've done. Bring it around to the opposite side of the head and we're now going to run it down this side. <laughs> she said
seems to have lost her way or be searching for something right now. <laughs> Don't worry, we're going to take care of that. She's going to be just fine. With the 260 length we have here, we are going to squish the air back towards the uninflated end. Just flattening it out and rolling that balloon around gently to avoid hopefully getting any friction there. And then we are going to sweep the 260 underneath the side hair bubble. We're going to find the point where it meets the pinch twist at the top and just twist as you turn. Easing it around that pinch twist and we're going to bring it around to the back of it. My balloon is a little bit longer than this pinch twist where it's going to meet at the back. So you can use this as an opportunity to help you design the fairy's hairstyle on the go. What I would encourage you, however much balloon you have left here, we want to get into this pinch twist. Sometimes it's a little bit shorter than this and sometimes it's longer as so. What is an actual bit of serendipity when you're doing this if you're really forcing and trying to twist the bubble at the end and get this bubble into this part of the hair it does something where it squishes this quick link in a little bit and just makes that head have a little bit of squish to it which actually brings out quite a bit of character to the design so that's really cool try it try it i'm not going to struggle to get my balloon into here but what i am going to do is Sweep it under and around. Just give it a bit of a tug to make sure it's nice and firmly against that side of the hair bubble. Just twisting in there. So this could be one particular hairstyle, just a basic pony, but we're going to be a little bit fancier than that. So I'm going to go ahead to remove this excess. And she is still looking for something that she lost. Let's help her straighten up a bit. And we do that by moving these pink twists to get back. You're still going to find she does have a propensity to be looking down, but we are going to get that sorted soon, I promise. <laughs> Next, we're going to take the 160Q again in the rows to create the hair curl. This is where the legenda really comes into its own because curling balloons is a snap. Plate your 160 all the way to the end. And release the air now the trick when you are preparing your balloon for getting it curled is to make sure you've got it flattened out and there's no kinks in the balloon as you go I'm going to wrap this around my finger and I've overlapped it a bit but what is important is hold down the end with your thumb and we're going to go ahead now to pop that nozzle bit onto my electric inflator and wait for the magic a little bit of air out before I tie up that curl. <laughs> Isn't it glorious? Oh my god, I love making curls with the Legenda. I am going to introduce it to the design by placing in at the pinch twist at the back. When I am attaching this balloon, I'm just going to make sure this side of the nozzle is getting into the design. really help it hold in place. You could actually just put the curl in without doing this next step but I like to do this to create really full volume of hair. We are going to sweep that curl underneath the 260 that we swept under the hair before. Pull it 
nice and snug against the pinch strip at the top. And I'm just twisting and rolling a bit as I go. And I want to try and hide the mechanics of that pinch twist. So as I fold the 160 down, I'm putting it over the top of that. Sweep it under the 260 on the opposite hair side and pulling it nice and snug to this pinch twist. Where I am just pushing and twisting and getting that in place. She is still searching. Don't worry, I am on top of that. So this is what we're looking at so far and this is about where I get major hair envy. <laughs> How's that even a thing? It's a balloon. The final balloon that's going to be used is a 260 for her wings and I've opted to use one of the chrome golds because they're gorgeous. I haven't played this balloon all the way. I'm just going to soften it ever so slightly by releasing some air. But also what I want to do is ensure I've got a nice little bit of nozzle left over and I've left about an inch here. Gonna tie that off. Take your 260, make sure the ends are aligning together, and then twisting it together, finding our midpoint. And twisting it in. To help lock it in place, I'm just gonna roll this little golden end. around positioning the nozzle on one side and the bubble on another. You can go ahead to shape your wing design. That's a nice and cute way to do it. And now I'm going to take the wings and introduce them into the doll right here underneath the pinch twist. Taking your wings And I've just wrapped it a couple of times around that little pinch twist. And this is where we help our doll find what she's looking for. Give that nozzle end a pull. We're going to bring it down and wrap it into the petals of it. And now she is no longer searching for her lost treasures because she can see. So we've got that nozzle here. Connecting into the dress and bringing her head back. Now these bubbles at the front here, you can play a little bit with their presentation. Just working gently. I'm easing it to sit a bit more over the 260. And that's changed up her hairstyle just a little bit. So either way actually works really nice. If we go back to our blue fairy from earlier, we can see that with her hairstyle, they look remarkably similar. So with our turquoise fairy. Just make the adjustments needed to your design to conceal the inner workings here and here. And, B. and we spent a lot of effort on that curl, didn't we? You can't really see it when it's in this position, so we want to make it more prominent. moving it out to the side and I've just slightly adjusted that pinch twist to help with the balloon uh, forcing it out this direction. Okay. 
I think that's about it for the balloon design. Now we're ready to draw her face. So I invite you to come closer. Come on, a bit closer than that. That's it. Have a peek over my shoulder, watch me do the artwork, and I'll talk you through it each step of the way. Let's go. We're going to start with a white Posca paint marker to give her her mouth. Approximately two thirds down the face, we're going to start by drawing the upper part of the mouth, followed by the lower. We have a deeper line made for the bottom of the mouth and a flatter one for the top. Now we're going to go ahead to add her cheeks. Position them fairly even with the mouth. When you start drawing the second circle, make sure you start smaller and go to bigger. It's far easier to add to the shape rather than reduce or remove from it. be fussed too much with getting a perfect circle but do know that when we layer the eyes over the top that's going to conceal the shape underneath so you will find that you don't need to perfectly make sure that they're rounded at the top. Next we're going to do the eyes and they are a pear or teardrop shape. add the eyelashes starting with the flat of your marker and moving to the point as you lift off the balloon. Now you can go ahead and use black marker to do the eyebrows if you wish, but I do like to use that opportunity to match it to the hair colour and that's why we're using the magenta. And to do the eyebrows we're just going to do a small simple line on the top of each eye. but you can end it in a little point so that it has that nice groomed shape of an eyebrow. Now we're going to use the same marker to do her lipstick. Starting at one side of the mouth and using the point of your marker, gradually flattening it onto the side and then bringing it back up to a point as you reach the other side. And I like to turn my balloon upside down to do this. Again, starting with the point of your marker and flattening it out as you get to the bottom of the mouth and bring it back into a point at the other side. Just took the opportunity to straighten out her slightly crooked smile. Oh, nearly forgot the nose. And finally we're going to take the white Posca paint marker once more and we're going to do the shine in the eyes. I like to do one circle and then a heart shape by doing a V. We're going to repeat the process for the opposite eye and remember the light source is coming from the one direction so you don't want this to be a mirror image. And there you have it, the finished face of your fairy. Now as a thank you for watching all the way to the end I'm going to share with you a few ideas about what else you could do with your design. <laughs>
Now here is a fairy who is missing one crucial element, that is her arms. I've gone ahead to remove the excess of these scrap 160s. I'm going to tie them together. And I'm going to introduce those arms in at the pinch twist of her dress. Take them. have just added that in. An alternative on this doll is her arms with hands at the end. Take your Mocha 160. <gasps> Started raining. <laughs> Inflate it. Put a two finger bubble and lock that in place by threading your knot through. Next we are going to do a pinch twist to this loop pedal we've done. And what I've done there is just simply split it in two and give it a few good twists. That friction should hold it in there together nicely. I'm going to bend and shake the balloon by squeezing the point and releasing the air. Twisting off an arm and this is where you'd introduce it into your fairy and then replicate the process on the opposite side. And you want to try and make those arms as easily as possible. As I'm splitting this pedal twist, I'm going to make one side bigger than the other. undone but that's okay because you could simply just retwist that in. And you can take that and add it in to your doll. Like she is. And there we have our fairy friends. <laughs> and that's it, the finished balloon designs. I really hope you like this tutorial. Make sure you give it a big thumbs up, especially if you think it's an improvement over the last one, as well as make sure if you haven't already, you subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss another video. Is there another one of my videos that you'd like to see me remake? I'd love to hear from you. And believe me, I'm always listening and watching. <laughs> Pop a comment in the section below and I will see you on the next video. Bye. And that is approximately approximately and it's going to be here it's going to be here so by having a more petite bodice or uh, tummy don't don't talk while you're inflating it's not good my back's really sore